Dear viewers, welcome back. In this video, we explore the notion of general purpose AI models, how to classify them, and what obligations apply to their providers. Let's go. First things first, it is important to understand that AI models are not AI systems on their own, but are essential parts thereof. Without a model, an AI system cannot manage its tasks. This being said, a general purpose AI model, or GPAI model, is an AI model with significant versatility, able to perform well for a wide range of tasks. For instance, a GPI model might be efficient at recognizing images, understanding speech, answering questions, and translating. It can also be capable of generating content such as audio, image, and or video. Beyond this core characteristic, that is to say performing well for a wide range of tasks, a feature of GPI models is that they can be easily integrated into a variety of different systems or applications downstreams, even those it was not specifically designed for. Let's take an example. GPT-4 is a general purpose AI model developed by OpenAI. It can perform multiple tasks, generating code for video game development, translating text into multiple foreign languages, or even creating a website from simple sketches. GPT-4 can be integrated into a computer system to build general purpose AI systems, such as ChatGPT or Microsoft Copilot. But GPT-4 could also be integrated into a system designed to perform narrower tasks, for example, into fintech applications. Since AI models are not AI systems, they are not subject to the same classification rules. Though, a risk-based approach is also used. To classify AI models, the AI Act introduces the notion of models with systemic risks. The regulation distinguishes between two categories of GPI models, those that present a systemic risk and those that do not. An AI model will be considered as presenting systemic risks if one of the two following criteria is met. First possibility, the AI model is high impact capabilities. An AI model is present to have such capabilities when the cumulative amount of computation used for its training, measured in floating point operations, exceeds 10 exponent 25. When a general purpose AI model meets this criterion, its provider must notify it to the commission. Or, second possibility, the EU Commission adopts a decision stipulating that a GPAI model is high impact capabilities, even if the model does not meet the 10 exponent 25 threshold. Let's now dive more specifically into the obligations applicable to GPAI models. Whether they present systemic risks or not, all GPAI models are subject to common minimal obligations. These obligations mainly aim at ensuring transparency through three types of requirements. First, the provider of any GPI model must make available documentation to allow the AI system providers who wish to integrate such models in their systems to understand models' capabilities and limitations. This information must be sufficient to enable AI system providers to comply with their own obligations under the AI Act. Annex 12 of the regulation contains a list of elements that must, at a minimum, be described in the documentation. It includes, for example, a description of the tasks the model is intended to perform, as well as the type and nature of AI systems in which it can be integrated or information about the data used for its training. Second, GPI model providers must draw up and keep updated another piece of technical documentation, which includes training and testing processes and results. This documentation is intended for enforcement authorities. Logically, when providers of GPI models without systemic risks release them under free and open licenses, with information about parameters and models architecture made public, the true transparency obligations discussed so far are not applicable. Third, 
the provider of any GPAI model must make available to the general public a detailed summary of the content used to train the model. GPI models are trained on a large amount of data. Hence, it is important to allow users, as well as anyone interested, to obtain information regarding the quality and type of training data. That requirement may also enable copyright holders to verify whether their copyrighted works have been used or not to train GPAI models. In addition to these three transparency requirements, GPAI model providers are also subject to reinforced obligations related to intellectual property rights. Providers must implement an internal policy to comply with union law on copyright and related rights. They particularly have to ensure that copyrighted works whose authors refused the use for AI model training purposes are not illegally used. When a GPAI model presents a systemic risk, its provider must comply with additional requirements. First, it is required to perform a model evaluation in accordance with state-of-the-art protocols and tools. This includes conducting adversarial testing to identify systemic risks. Second, the provider must assess and mitigate the systemic risks associated with its model. The regulation provides some examples of systemic risks. That includes AI models that have real or potential negative effect on democratic processes, on the dissemination of illegal, false or discriminatory content or risks of serious consequences for public health and safety. Third, the provider must keep documents and report, with due diligence, information about serious incidents and possible corrective measures to address them. The recipients of such information are the AI office and, if appropriate, national competent authorities. Fourth, the provider must ensure an adequate level of cyber security for the model, as well as adequate security for its physical infrastructure. The obligation imposed on GPAI model providers may seem abstract and complex at this stage. To assist them in proper implementation, the AI Act mentioned codes of practice to be drafted by the AI office. Codes of practice will particularly guide providers of GPAI models with systemic risks on identifying the type and nature of systemic risks, as well as the measures, procedures, and methods for assessing and managing such risks. According to the regulation, these codes of practice must be ready for May 2025 at the latest. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.